and welcome back to Film Schooled. So, uh, I recently taught a class where I showed my students how to create custom transitions uh, using the effects in Avid Media Composer, uh, specifically the 3D warp and the animat effect. So, a lot of people don't know that a lot of the effects inside of an Avid inside of Avid can be used as both a clip effect, also known as a filter effect, or a transition effect. Okay, so I decided to kind of share this with you guys and I'm kind of splitting that up into two videos. So this video is gonna be on the animat, how to create a custom transition using the, using the animat effect. And there's also one out there uh, that you can look up uh, using the 3D warp. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Uh, first off, let's talk about the animat. The animat is used for compositing images. Okay, so you can stack clips on top of each other and then use the animat to essentially cut a hole in the clip on top so you can see through to the clip on the bottom. Uh, this is not necessary, but I am gonna go to my effects editing workspace. If we look in the timeline, I do have two clips stacked on top of each other. So this is the clip on video two, the shot of the surfboards, and the clip on video one, if we monitor video one, is the shot of these palm trees, okay? And what I would like to do is I would like to composite these images together, okay? And I'm gonna do that with the animat effect. I'm back to monitoring video two. We're gonna go up to this window in the upper left corner where right now I'm looking at my bin container, but over here on the left, we have two tabs here. Uh, one is the effect palette. This is where we're gonna find uh, the effects uh, within Avid. And we do have four tabs at the top of the effect palette. We have filters, transitions, audio track effects, and audio clip effects. Okay, so let's go over to filters. Let's go to filters. Over here on the left are the different categories of filters or clip effects, if you want to think of them that way. And we're going to go to the key category. This is how we composite images together. And inside the key category, we have the animat. Okay, it's a mat you can animate. So I'm just gonna grab that, I'm gonna drag it, and I'm gonna drop it onto the top clip, and then I'm gonna go into effect mode. I'm gonna click the effect mode button right here at the top of my toolbar above my timeline, and that's gonna open up the effect editor over here to the left of my record monitor. So with the animat, uh, you have to start by drawing the shape. So over here on the right are different drawing tools. Okay, we've got the uh, rectangle tool, the oval tool, uh, the polygon tool, the what they call the uh, curve tool. Some people might call it the, the uh, free draw tool. And then we've got the brush tool. Okay, so uh, we're gonna start with a simple oval. Okay, I'm just gonna grab the oval tool and I'm just gonna click, I'm gonna drag, I'm gonna draw a circle, and boom. I have created a, a mat. Okay, it's basically cutting a hole so we can see through to the clip underneath. And then there are two modes uh, for the animat. Right now, we're keying our top image in. That's what we're seeing. So if we look over here at modes, there's a little drop down menu right now it says key in. I can click that menu and I can choose the other mode which is key out. Okay, so now we're seeing, you know, the bottom clip inside the circle. Okay, so you can do a key in or a key out. I can also go down here that we have feathering so I can give that shape kind of a soft edge instead of a hard edge. Now with the animat, it already has keyframes at the beginning and end of the clip. Okay, so we don't get a keyframe graph over here. If we make this wide, we don't get a keyframe graph over here on the right side of the effect editor like we do in effects like the 3D warp. Instead, we do all of our keyframing down here underneath the record monitor. Okay, so I have two active keyframes. I've got a keyframe at the head of the clip and I've got a keyframe at the end of the clip. 
what I'm going to start by doing is I'm just going to grab this shape. I'm going to click in the middle. I'm going to drag it over here to the left, and I've moved that shape. But I have not animated it because right now both of my keyframes are active, so nothing happens other than I move the shape. But now I'm going to go over here. I'm, I'm going to click on the last keyframe. And when I do, that keyframe stays pink, but the first keyframe turns gray. Okay, that means this pink keyframe at the end of the clip is now the active keyframe. Any changes I, any changes I make now are just going to affect this keyframe. Okay, so now I'm going to click on the shape, and I'm going to drag it over to the right. And now when I play this, the shape is going to move as the playhead plays from one keyframe to another. I've animated the shape. Just going to play this. So there is my animat. I've animated the mat. And once again, I did this just by layering two clips on top of each other, adding the animat, drawing a shape. Okay, but as I said, we can also use this as a transition on an edit point. So I'm going to go back over to my bin container. I'm going to bring that to the front. And I've created a sequence for this where I've just got a bunch of clips you know, one right after another in the timeline right now, straight cuts. In between the edits. OK, so let's say I want to create my own custom diagonal wipe with a soft border, with a soft edge. Well, I can do that with the animat effect. Let's go up to our effect palette. And just to show you this, if I go from filters to the transitions tab and then go down to the key category, there's my animat. Okay, so I can find it in both places. It's the same effect in both places, but we can use it as either a filter effect or a transition effect. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab that. I'm gonna drag it, but this time I'm gonna drop it not on the clip, but I'm gonna drop it on the edit point in between the clips. So notice I could drop it on the clip to either side of the edit point, but I can also just drop it right at the edit, and that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna drop it on the edit, and when we first play this, we're not gonna see anything happen. It's just gonna automatically switch to the other clip because we need to animate a mat. We need to create the mat and we need to animate it. So we put our playhead over the animat and we go into effect mode. So I'm gonna click the effect mode button. That's gonna open up our effect editor and we need to draw our own custom shape in this uh, situation. And we need a little bit more room to work in our record monitor. So when we're in effect mode, we get different buttons uh, under part of our record monitor. So over here, bottom left corner, we have reduce and enlarge buttons. Okay, so the reduce button will kind of zoom out so I can see extra space around the image that I'm working on. And that's what we wanna do. Because we actually have to draw a shape that's bigger than our picture. So we're essentially cutting a hole that's bigger than the image that we're working on, and then we're going to animate it over. Okay, so if I'm going to try to do a diagonal, here's what I would do. I'm going to grab the polygon tool. The polygon tool is how you draw your own custom shapes. So I'm going to click on that. And in this case, I'm just going to start here. I'm just going to click, and I'm going to make control points outside of my image. So I'm going to click here, I'm going to go up here, click, and then I'm going to go way over here, and I'm going to click, and then I'm going to go down here, I'm almost making like a blade type shape, and then I'm going to click, we'll say here, and then you have to go back and close the shape. So you have to go back to your original point and click, and now... I've made my animat. And the idea is, you know, this is completely covering the image. So at the end of the transition, you're going to see the whole picture. Okay. And then let's just for fun, we're going to grab this and we're going to drag it maybe about halfway back and release the mouse. 
and you'll see that we're revealing uh, the clip that's underneath. And let's drag it the rest of the way back. Okay, now we can see the whole image. So the idea is that as the animat moves on, we're going to reveal the other image. Now, before we keyframe this, as I said, I want to do a diagonal with a soft edge. And right now it's got a hard edge. So before I do any keyframing, because I don't want to keyframe the softness, let's change that first. That would be feathering. So we go over here to our animat controls and my feathering, which is right underneath the mode here, uh, is fixed aspect. I mean, we're going to be feathering both the horizontal and vertical axis. That's fine. We want to leave that locked. But we're going to grab either of these sliders. We're just going to drag it over until we have a nice soft edge on the edge of our mat. Okay, so for now for the animation, I'm going to start by uh, clicking on the first keyframe, bottom left corner of the record monitor. I'm going to click on that first keyframe. So it's the only active keyframe. When I click on it, it stays pink. The keyframe at the end of the clip is now gray, meaning any changes I make right now are only going to affect the first keyframe, the pink keyframe. And then I'm going to grab my shape. And I'm going to drag it all the way off the screen like that. Then I'm going to click on the last keyframe. I'm going to click on the last keyframe so it turns pink. This is now the active keyframe. The first keyframe is now gray. And then I'm going to grab my shape. I'm going to click and I'm going to drag it so it's all the way over the screen or all the way over the picture. And now when I drag my playhead in between the two keyframes, I have animated that shape, that animat, over my picture. And that's going to create my custom transition. Now I'm going to scale this back up. I'm going to click the enlarge button until my image fits back into the frame. I'm going to exit effect mode by clicking on the time code bar in the timeline. And then I'm just going to drag my playhead back and take a look at my custom transition. And there we go. So there's my custom diagonal wipe. Okay, so let's do another one of those just with a different shape. Okay, so I'm going to grab the animat effect again. I'm going to drop it right at the edit. And then I'm going to draw a new shape. So I'm going to go into effect mode, playhead over the effect, click the effect mode button. I'm going to hit the reduce button a few times until I have a lot of space. And now I'm going to create uh, what you might call like a sawtooth type wipe. So I'm going to grab the polygon tool again. And I'm just, just going to start kind of like down here. I'm just going to click. Then I'm going to go up here. I'm going to click. I'm going to go over here. Click. Go here. Click. And then I'm going to create a kind of like a little sawtooth pattern. A little kind of zigzaggy type thing here. And you do have to go back and kind of close the shape. So you have to go back to your original point and click to close the shape. Uh, if you're not happy with the way you drew it, we can go over here on the right side of our effect editor. And the third tool down is the reshape tool. You can click on that and there you can see your control points and you can actually click and drag them you know, reposition them. You can also click where there is no control point to add a control point. You know, there's other ways to create curves. We're not going to get into that right now. But if you need to reshape this, you 
you can. If you're not happy, you know, with, you know, the way you maybe did some of it, you can fix that. And then we go back to our selection tool, our arrow tool on top. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing again. Uh, this time, uh, this is already where I want this to end up. So all I have to do is go to my first keyframe here, click it. So it's the active keyframe. And then I'm just going to grab this shape. And I'm going to pull it off the screen like that. And now when I drag my play, that's going to animate that image onto the screen or actually animate the mat onto the screen. And then when I'm done, I'm going to click the enlarge button a couple times. I'm going to exit effect mode by clicking on the time code bar on the timeline, drag my play head back and check my work. And there is my custom transition. Okay, so if you want to use that over and over again, you can save it to a bin, just like you can any of your other effects. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go up here. I'm going to click on my bins tab to bring that back to the front. I have a bin for my saved effects. So I've created a bin here. Or I've already called it saved effects. Here's my transition from my 3D warp lesson that you might want to go check out. Uh, but I put my play head over the effect that I want to save. I go back into effect mode. And then I just go up to the top of the effect editor. There's, you know, it says animat. Over here to the right, we see the effect icon. I'm just going to grab that effect icon, drag it from the effect editor into the bin. And then it's a good idea to give it a good name. I'm just going to call this, you know, sawtooth top to bottom. So I know it moves from the top of the screen to the bottom of the screen. And then if I want to use it again, I simply drag that onto another edit point. So I'm going to grab that from the saved effects bin, and I'm just going to drop it onto the next edit. I'm going to exit effect mode, just drag my play it back and check it. There it is. Okay, so that is how you can, can create a custom transition using the Animat effect in Avid Media Composer.